The only lyrics are that repeated a few times, and then the phrase, and I apologize for pronunciation, uh, Nagul Mzuri, which I, I couldn't translate for the life of me. Uh, Mzuri means good. And I tried mm. every possible like, uh, start of that sentence I could, I could to try and backwards translate what Nagul could be, and I got nothing. <laughs> so it's something good. Uh, I, lo- I love you, baby. Blank good. Is so, is all I got from that one? Um, something good could be something good. It could be it's all good. Everything's good. I I tried all of these kinds of things and I got nothing. So there we go. Uh, That's but, still cool though. That's yeah, a good song. Uh, but the the other two songs are both uh, written performed by Nomsa Burkhart and Mark Killian. Mark Killian also did the score for the film. Uh, the first one is called Hamba Nulafeko or Nulapeko, which translates to either go miserable or go suffering. This is all, <laughs> all via Google Translate, so I apologise if everything's not correct, but I could find no lyrics for this. Uh, the only video I found was for a different song by somebody else. Uh, but this, that's even more information than I found than on the third song, Sunbunin Io, which I couldn't even get a translation. Just oh, wow. did, did nothing. Googling this, nothing came up. So I don't, I don't know. I tried. Uh, listeners, I'm sorry. Listeners out there, if you have any more information on these songs, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to see it. But I couldn't, I couldn't come up with anything more. And I just want to apologise because there's so little in this chapter that I, I tried to cling to the songs and there was nothing to hold on to. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I learned something kind of cool. So in uh, here in the states, we the, we call them electrics. So you have the grips and electrics. But in South Africa, they call them the sparks. That's, yeah, I, I saw that in the credits. I didn't click what, that's what that was, but that's, that's cool. Yeah, I, I thought that, and I was like, that's pretty neat. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, they're both kind of the same. You have electrics, and then you have sparks, and they just sit on everything. Yeah, so yeah cause <laughs> a, a, a spark or a sparky is, is a slang term for an electrician in the UK. So, yeah, that makes sense. I don't, uh, know, I don't I, know why I didn't think about it. <laughs> I worked with a guy named Sparky, and he was a dolly grip, <laughs> he was a but dolly. he was a grip. Yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting. I wonder if he started as an electric and then became a dolly grip. I got to tell you, Jay, dolly grips are where, it, where it's at. You get the grip, you get the dolly off the track, off the truck, and then you help set up the, the pipe that it goes on, and then you just push the dolly. So you have the DP on it, and but, I mean, you got to learn your marks, and you got to be very patient and have, like, a good – you just have to have laser focus on to hit your marks with your dolly grip, but – that's your gig. You just get to push a dolly around. It's pretty awesome. It, yeah, it sounds like a very stress-free, as long as, as long as you're doing it properly. Yeah, that sounds like a good gig. And I was looking into Patty Reed. She was the associate producer on a movie called Grind. Have you seen the movie Grind? I have not. I'm not even sure what it is. Well, it was one of those movies that was coming out during the Out Cold, the American Pie, the Euro Trip, those kind of movies. It was about skaters. Okay, yeah, makes sense. But there's a character in it. I don't really remember much of him, but he was called Sweet Lou. And okay. I remember just really liking that character. He was one of the kids from the opener of Super Troopers when, um, like, you know, the three guys who get stoned and they get driven around. Yeah, yeah. One of those guys. Okay. He, yeah, he's Sweet Lou in it. So if you can ever watch a Sweet Lou supercut, <laughs> do it. He's kind of like a McConaughey that is is just as creepy but he's played as awesome so you don't have like that weird creeper vibe but you just get this dude's awesome but he has a good scene where he does the atlas which is like where you put both your arms up and kind of make like a kind of like an arrow motion right so he has like the atlas and my my apologies if you knew that already i didn't mean to mark spain the atlas didn't it's fine but uh yeah sweet lou i just want to give sweet lou some love out there well, the actor is a guy called joey kern i have just on, yeah. his, on his imdb the only thing i know him from is as playing rich white guy in the key and peel sketch alien imposters so hey. which i recognize him from that and nothing else <laughs> sweet lou man yeah i love some sweet lou so is, is grind worth watching no no just uh, just well, the, has, just the I've... sweet lou supercut yeah, Sweet Lou Supercut, okay. if that exists. But Adam Brody's in it, and Jennifer Morrison. Yeah, they're, and you don't... Steve Jennifer Mo- they're, they're so young in it, too. Like I, And then the dude from Rat Race is in it, as well. The dude from Rat Race. Yeah, oh, the one oh. who had the lip piercing. 
Uh, yep, I know who you mean. Like his his the act, name of the actor, Vince Vilaf. There we go. Yeah. Found it. <laughs> what is it on IMDb? Are you looking at it right now? Yeah, it, it has uh, it has a six point naught, which is uh, frustratingly one point three more than DVC three. Oh man, which has a four point seven. But it's just, dude, this movie is pretty much how I used, like, these kids, the way they used to dress with, like, their ski caps and, uh, like, skate shirts. Man. Stephen Root's in it, Brian Hussain, Christopher McDonald. I'm I, telling you, huge cast. I really like Jason, Christopher McDonald. Yeah. He's fantastic in everything. Jason Lund at Bam Margera, there was, like, a bunch of huge, um, like, Sasha, like, there was a bunch of people from Dancing and Fuse in it. Uh, Brian Hussain. Yeah, yeah. As Orville the Scraggly guy. I mean, it had, like, a bunch of Days and Confused people in it, too. So, I mean, it received a theatrical release. I think it was in our theater for about two weeks when I was working there, and it disappeared. Yeah, 2003. But, yeah, I don't know, man. Just, I just have fond memories of Sweet Lou. Even though I don't know if Sweet Lou's that great of a character, but thank you, Patty Reed, for reminding me of, of Sweet <laughs> Lou crushing it in the 2003 film Grind. If nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> if nothing uh, else. <laughs> and there were two uh, production assistants named Luke. In this movie. Okay. That's got to be interesting. <laughs> okay. I, I wonder if Luke Pogue earned his his change on this one. Because I'm guessing, right? I'm guessing I, I, John I brought him in. I hope he did. Yeah. yeah. Well, the yeah. Uh, the Marine safety team is all of his the same family. It, it's Jonathan, Ezra, and Storm Valentine. And Whoa, Storm Valentine was a badass name. That's legit. <laughs> Are you talking about the frog, the frog uh, crew? They're just called Marine Safety in the credits. Oh, man, that's uh, a good gig. Yeah, like Storm Valentine, Marine Safety. That's, <sighs> that's, that's a name. <laughs> and I got to tell you, I know we've talked about this before, but the the fight coordinator on this, so, um, like, fight coordinator was Grant Powell. This dude, he, he also did the stunts on Bloodshot. He was the stunt co- uh, co- uh, coordinator on Bulletproof 2, the Red Sea Diving Resort, that Chris Evans movie. He did Scorpion King movies. Like he was the assistant stunt coordinator on Deep Blue Sea 2 and the fight coordinator in Tomb Raider. That was a big movie. Yeah. And he also did a ton of black sails. So I think, it, and, and Scorpion King 4, Quest for Power. But yeah, they had a good crew on this with these fights. And I think the fights showed up pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, there's three big fight sequences in this, none of which we expected. But all of which we talk about. <laughs> so <laughs> I still don't expect. Them. <laughs> it just, I did, I did not go into a deeply sea film expecting not just one but multiple fist fights and for them to be all kinds of awesome. So yeah, this this film blew me away. When whenever Lucas comes back for his second fight and he's <laughs> on fire, I always forget about it. Like when he come, I, I'm like, oh yeah, Lucas is back. I always forget. It's always, and it makes me happy. It's like the fire truck chase in Con Air or the car chase in The Rock that whenever I see him again, I'm like, oh yeah, those happened. Like, for some reason, they always leave my memory. Like every time I watch Con Air, I'm like, wait, there's, there's a fire truck chase. Oh, yeah, because that, that's the bit after the. You, you think of Con Air as the plane film. And, yep. you know, there, it is a plane film. And then, oh yeah, it's a fire truck chase. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> and oh wait, and speed the train. Yep, yeah, the train. That's the bit I always forget as well. Is because is, is, speed is a bus film. It's not an elevator bus train film. It's the bus film. But it's, <laughs> it's all in there. Yeah. No, wait, but I'm taller. But I'm taller. I still don't get that <laughs> final <laughs> line. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I'm assuming Hopper <laughs> lost his head. On um, okay, I just want to say that sign. Whoever installed that sign into the ceiling of that train tunnel did a magnificent job because that thing goes nowhere and it takes off like tendons and spine and nerves and skin and bone and it's fine. Yeah, it is a robust, it is a, a bizarrely robust sign. Uh, it, well, I suppose it's not, it's not a sign because it wouldn't be, I'm not sure what it is. It's some kind of fixture of some kind. Another question for you. You're Keanu Reeves, oh, and fantastic. you are I'm aboard. on top of a train, and you're crawling, and a, a like a stark raving mad Dennis Hopper from '94 is crawling after you. <laughs> that seems so silly. Like it ends on top of it. Like how would you feel? Would you would you be kind of happy? Like oh, I can take this dude, or 
What are you thinking at this moment? Well, I feel like Dennis Hopper, he's got a good 20 years on Keanu Reeves at least. It's a light. Mm. He gets taken by a light. I just, oh, okay. I just watched it. <laughs> it's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it is a robust light fitting. It's a flashing red light that just, just fully decapitates him. <laughs> uh, what am I thinking in that? Uh, um, it's a bizarre situation, but then it's been a day full of them for him at that point. What is his name? What is Keanu Reeves' name in that film? Jack Traven, I want to say. Yeah, Jack okay. Traven. I never remember his name either. Because it's it's, 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 it's follow his name. It's, it's no Johnny Utah, is it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's no Hans Gruber. No. Yeah, I, I think it. Well, the the use of the light is good. He's using his environment. Uh, but he's got to be careful because he's got his hands like properly around Hopper's neck, and the light sticks out quite a bit. So there's a chance that he would nick his hand. On, on the light as well as Hopper's head, so that's that's he takes some care in that. It's a, it's an it's an odd situation to be in. It is a bizarre way to end that film. I've always found uh, this, is, this film all about a bus that's going to explode if it slows down, and it ends with a guy being decapitated on top of a train <laughs> and told that he's not now shorter than somebody yeah. else, which I get, but yeah, that's a weird one. And we missed it. We missed it. We could have we should have gotten Florian in here the fight choreographer for this movie, because he also did Monster Hunter, which Tony Jaa is on that movie, and Mila Jovovich, and Ron Perlman. That's got to be cool to work with with Tony Jaa and Mila Jovovich on a big-budget movie as a fight choreographer. That's got to be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, that's that's only recently come out in the UK, so I've not had a chance to get to it yet. But I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's pure silliness. Yeah, I, I'm not expecting it to be fantastic, uh, but I'm expecting to to enjoy myself. Like at one point, I, I just I I was like Mila Jovovich, who I, whatever Fifth Element, all the Resident Evil movies, Perfect Getaway, which I think is a, a good movie. Like she's she's an action star. Like I I think she's an action icon and all. Like her the Resident Evil franchise has grossed over a billion dollars. These are R-rated movies. Like they they almost like in Japan. The final chapter almost made as much as Rogue One. Like these movies wow. are gigantic. And then her fighting Tony Ja from Ung Bak and Triple Threat and Protector and oh my gosh, Triple X two three, I, I which I, I think is a bonkers fun action movie. But that I just watching them fight, it just felt like royalty brawling in front of my eyes. I didn't even care about the monsters. Like Ron Perlman's got this weird haircut. The ending is you don't even know what's going on. But just watching Jovovich and Ja fight, oh my gosh. And he got to be there. Florian did. That'd be cool to, to pick his... Hey, welcome to Deep Blue C3. Let's talk about Monster Hunter. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I want to talk about his dealing with Bren and his spin kicks. Well, I mean, I'm sure he'd be happy to talk about anything. Uh, any, any film he's worked on. And if he's listening, the door is still open. We'd still love to have you on and talk to you. This is not the end of the podcast. We have plans. Oh, yeah. yeah we, we need we, to get him. We're going to keep going. I would love, I would love to talk about Bloodshot with yeah, them as well. I need to see it first, but yeah. <laughs> Man, that movie, Bloodshot, it ends with, well, I can't tell you who. <laughs> but let me tell you, I love in that movie, Lamorne Morris. He is, he's just the weirdest character. He's a hacker. And then you have Isaac Gonzalez crushing it. You got Guy Pierce wearing sweaters. It just makes me happy. Then there's a scene where Wiley, played by Lamorne Morris, is like, hey, Bloodshot, how about you say thank you? And for the rest of the movie, Bloodshot says thank you for everything. It's just oh, nice. He's had an effect. Yeah. It's a good picture. I like it. And it's under listen, it's un, it's underappreciated. If your favorite movie is The Last Temptation of Christ, you might hate it. <laughs> but if you if you're like, I am watching Bloodshot right now, you will enjoy it. That's all I'm saying, Jay. Okay. So uh one thing we, we absolutely have to do on this show <laughs> is talk about the deepest and bluest chapters. Of this, oh whole, my of gosh. this whole damn franchise, because because oh. we've seen them all. I've I've fine toothed combed my way through all of them, no matter how deep and how blue they are. And I've got a graph. The graphs can get posted somewhere, uh, but we need to talk about it. So yes, it it has to be done, and we're going to do it now. So we've got over the course of these of these films, there's been 54 chapters. There's 33 in the first DBC. There's 10 in DBC two, and there's 11 in DBC three. That adds up to 54. Yeah. I don't know why I had to go through that because no one cares. Uh, but, but I got to say, it, it. I'm not surprised. I'm a little disappointed that all of the superlative, deepest blues, everything, they're all within that first film. So 
The deepest and bluest chapter is in Deep Sea, as is the deepest.